Hey, welcome back to the Signature Movement. It's your girl, Tanya D. Floyd. I am... Okay, first let me explain. It's been way too many weeks since the last time I broadcast anything. But, here's what happened. Um, The whole month of December, your girl was sick. Yeah, the whole month of December and part of January. So, um, you know, I was sounding like a dude. <laughs> and I couldn't control my cough. <laughs> and I was laying around because I really didn't have any energy to do anything. I couldn't. Yeah, I just couldn't. All of it. I couldn't. Okay. So here I am putting it back together, seeing, you know, what if anybody still cares. <laughs> here I am. I'm back, right? I really was sick, though. I couldn't. I couldn't get up and do stuff. And child, let me tell you, when I finally hit my foot on the bottom step and looked around, I was like, Jesus, I left the ADHD kid in charge of the house. It was clear. Yeah. So now I'm trying to recover from all the um, visual damage and stimulation of all the millions of things I still got to do because um, nobody was doing them. I go in the bathroom. I'll be like, just don't even turn the light on because I don't want to see it. I don't want to know nothing about that. Um, then I go in the kitchen and uh, there's a backlog of dishes. I'm going to just go ahead and buy the paper plates and stop playing around. We're not going to keep doing this load the dishwasher thing. It's too much. And right now I'm struggling a little bit because I got, um, I don't know, last night and the night before, I, I was feeling a little bit of breathing issue. I don't know. I assumed I knew what was wrong with me, but this is some new stuff going on. <laughs> like, um, it's weird when I breathe. That's all I can say. It's weird. I've never felt it before. I don't know what this is. I can breathe. I can take a deep breath. I don't feel short of breath, but I got a weird feeling in my chest, like things that is not there. My aunt said maybe it's fluid. Maybe she right. I'm going to go see the people. I called the people. I checked in with the people on an e-visit, and they gave me some antibiotics toward the end, and I thought it was like a sinus infection, so that went away. And, you know, all my stuff was working out with the decongestants and things. But, yeah, um, yeah, my chest feel weird. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel like my cough going to come back any minute now. So, there's that. But here I am. I'm back. Yeah, so let's get into it. Um, I don't even know what I really want to talk about today, except I want to introduce you to the segment I have called the Single Mama Saga. If you go to my YouTube channel, um, I'm at Tanya D. Floyd on YouTube. So if you go to my channel, you'll see different playlists, and one of those is Single Mama Saga. Um, that is all about life as a single parent, life as a black single mother, life as a a mother of three different age children in different groups, you know, some these adult children, I tell you, we still learn about them. Yeah. Every day is a new learning experience with them. Okay. I would like to just say the hell with it and don't even deal with them because they, they be lunching. But I can't still, you know, I can't. They you know, I did a video about adult toddlers. They like, let me do it, let me do it, but they always need some help. Adult toddlers, that's them. So that's how I view those uh, adult children. But yeah, anyway, again, I wanted to introduce you to what I call the single mama saga and why I call it that. It started, well, you know, it started when they were young, but I wrote a poem about it in 2013. One hit, here you go. Quiet time zero. I ain't no superhero. Don't want no S on this chest or no reason to jungle a bunch of mess. House dirty as hell. The source of that smell must be something in my trash. I'm going to whoop somebody's ass if they don't. Wait, let me pump my brakes. I'm getting angry again. Between these dirty kids and lying ass men, I can't win for losing. Bama's like all my stuff. Not like hot dogs or tenders and such. Can I have a Pepsi? Can I have some crabs? And everything in the fridge is up for grabs. Like we equal partners or some shit. I'm not a little bit interested in sharing my last anything. They keep eating, drinking, and no need of me thinking about having any company here. 
always a youngin in here. Mommy, can I play we? Mommy, he hit me. Mommy, can I have lunch money? Mommy, can you sign this for me? Mommy, we're hungry. Mommy, I need. Mommy, can you wipe me? Mommy, mommy, mommy. Me, me, me times three. I'm running away for sure before I snap and just start slapping mamas. I could on any given day. I need a vacation like yesterday. Now that was, you know, for the younger children. I had the nerve to go and write a part too, cause, well, you gotta talk about the daddies. And you gotta talk about as they age. So yeah, um, I was on one. Mm. Single Mama Saga, part two. Marginalized, pushed to the side, afterthought, forgotten often. Presence means nothing till somebody wants something. Symbol for oppression. Her only mission to impose restriction in her jurisdiction. Rebuke, reject, repel, veto, say no, can't go, can't do what they want to. Overruled. So very rude. Petty even. Visions of leaving them alone. No home, no ride, no protection, no guide, no buffer, no mother have to answer to no other. Freedom costs. Peace is lost. What's right ain't always popular. But be careful what you ask for. Dishes, bathrooms, and a couple of floors seems like a small price for keeping things nice. Sacrifice. I'm no stranger to it. Whatever it takes, I do it. Knees met, never let harm come to one. Sell me out for a jacket when Christmas comes. Birthdays, all it takes is a meal to seal the deal. 24-7, 365 is my tour. I've endured sheets and towels full of vomit and bowel, sleepless nights, everyday fights, suspensions, detentions, counselors, therapy, asthma, eczema, dialing 911 emergency, pissy clothes, pussy woes, 57 hours of labor, disrespectful behavior, nosy bloody, noses bloody, daddy's cruddy, no remorse, no support, ends not meeting, bama's cheating, days feeling like the devil is defeating me. Because I chose to accept responsibility for these lives. Feels like knives in my back when they act like life with me is misery. So I bless them and release them into the care of anyone out there who thinks he knows best. No regrets. Them kids better leave me alone. <laughs> As you can see, I have blessed and released them. Okay? <laughs> Mm-mm. Y'all not going to put me down like you used to. Oh, I used to be so stressed out all the time. Like, you know, oh, he hates me. He wants to go live with his father. And then when it happened, I found out uh, about a week or two later, my migraines went away. I ain't had no more headaches. Must be something to that. Release, honey, release. <laughs> So, yeah, that's how the Single Mama Saga was begun, um, with a poem and then another poem that ended up in the book, The Signature Movement. Who child? These kids will do you in. Ain't nobody got time for all that. But, yeah, like I said, I wanted to introduce some folks to what some of the things on my YouTube page are about and how I... How I get my videos to meet a certain theme. It's just my life and my experiences I'm sharing because I feel like somebody out there can relate and somebody else out there might be looking around like, is this crazy making? Like, is this only happening to me? Like, am I doing this right? <laughs> am I such a terrible person because I'm mother this way? Girl, no, we got you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, yeah, I'm sharing so that I can reach the people. Just the one. All I need is the one that needs it that day. <clears throat> if you don't need it, then just disregard, discard, and keep it moving. You ain't got to say nothing bad. Oh, my goodness. I'm looking through this Google Docs file where I have all these poems that I put together for different things. I'm telling y'all, I used to be really therapy. I had to, I don't know, I would just sit and the words would just come to me and then I would like 
look around and go, what can I rhyme that with that sounds slick or different or just, you know, not nursery rhyme-ish? And it would just come and flow. And afterwards, I would giggle or whatever, and it would just feel so much better. Whew. Um, I have another poem I found that I wanted to read. It's called... Oh, there's the rub. I remember distinctly what had happened right before I wrote it. I was at somebody's house, a family member. And it was like one of the times where every people keep trying to text me. I ain't got time. Um, yeah, it's it's let me read it. Maybe you can relate. When is a choice not a choice at all? When you lose all you work for, even though you made the right call. Life all around you falling apart. You know deep down in your heart that you did the right thing. But it doesn't bring consolation right away. Nothing anybody can say to ease the burning of your chest. Inability to rest. Memories, visions, replaying that life-altering decision. Thinking, what if I had just done the opposite? Can't take it back now. Stop it. When is a choice not a choice per se? When you leave because it's life-threatening if you stay? Only your body left, though. Your mind is playing tricks on you. So you beat yourself up better than they ever could about what many things you should have done, said, different. How good it would be if it didn't go down like that? Lies. You saw with your own eyes how bad it could be because you lived the nightmare daily. Forgive yourself. You did what you had to based on the options presented to you. When is a choice not a choice for real? When the mortgage is due and the electric is too. Child support ain't coming. You feel like running away from home, but you can't leave the kids alone. No groceries because the water bill came. Car no pay, so you drove to your families and stayed for dinner a few times. Found a few dimes to buy some juice and take it with you. Now they talking about you. How do you take that? Put it in your pocket. Can't make that a priority. Kids got to eat. Do what you need to meet the objective. Be it family or charity. Keep it in perspective. When is a choice not a choice anymore? When you've learned to pray and wait and lean on faith that you'll be provided for, then the choice is no longer yours. Things will fall in line. A path will appear. An answer divine so crystal clear you'll move despite, despite doubt or fear. And everything from that point will be different, but just go with it. Life tends to be of higher quality with your heavenly father in it. Look here. Your girl has seen some stuff. Okay. Single mama saga is a thing over here. Okay. Um, I mean, I didn't want to just bog you down with all the poetry, but something just told me this morning when I woke up, maybe based on a conversation I had last night, but something said, yeah, Floyd, we need to talk about this today. We need to just flesh some things out and um, go back to where it was. Um, part of that uh, is because of, you know, I'm still over here getting my ass kicked, if you was wondering. I'm still getting my ass kicked <laughs> in life. Just, woo child, put my hand up out the water like, hey, come save me, I'm over here. So, yeah, that might be part of it, but I just feel deeply connected to somebody out here. And I just want to tell you, girl, you got to go through this. But when you get to the other side of this, you will be the better for it. And all of this whole strong woman thing, I got another one of those messages today with the whole, she's strong because she had to be the whole time and everybody disappointed her and blah, blah. One of those messages. I'm not going to keep talking about being strong. I ain't doing it. I don't want it. I didn't sign up for it. It's a trauma response. I'm not going to keep going down that road knowing that that's what's happening. Right? So, yeah. I'm not volunteering to be the strong friend or the strong mother or any of that. No, I got some ideas if you want them, but no, I'm not jumping out there to do nothing. I'm not taking no bullets. No more. I'm done. Oh, matter of fact, look at this. <laughs> I was inspired one day this week to make myself a new shirt. All it says is, 
Nah. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. Nah. <laughs> Whatever it is, I disrespectfully disagree. Mm -mm. Nope. Not doing it. Can't do it. Ain't got it. So, yeah, whatever I'm learning and, you know, wherever I'm supposed to end up at the end of this here journey, I'm doing a good job on my path. I'm not taking no stuff in the boat with me. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> Somebody out there gonna say something wrong that girl. Yep. That's where I'm at. Nah. I keep telling my kids, and I think a lot of times... Um, I mess up when I keep telling them this, but I'm like, ain't nobody volunteering to send no help over here. Ain't nobody rushing over here to give us, build us, bring us nothing. So don't keep acting like, A, we got it like that, or B, you know, um, it's plentiful. Things are just going to keep flowing. Our resources is limited in here. Don't keep wasting nothing. Don't throw nothing away. Oh my God, one of my, re re my what do you call them? M one of my roommates like collecting things. And by things, I mean like in the kitchen. We got to have too many sauces and f flavorings. It's so much stuff falling out the cabinet. That's not how I live. I don't even know why we got to have all that. But I think it's, it's a, a trauma response from not having things at some point in life. You know, in their youth. And, um, yeah, they just feel like we need to have an overabundance of things now. And and we, we fancy if we got sauces to choose from and, you know, spices to use. You don't need all that crap. You need something to go with each major protein that you're cooking. And if you don't eat no meat, what you need a thousand seasoning for? What you seasoning? <laughs> what you saucing? Some... <laughs> some veggies veggies don't need all that would you need a dip for your asparagus people need to just stop and think a minute why am I doing this what is this for we not using all that stuff stop buying that stuff but it's just you know the whole strong woman and the whole um, you know it was just all in my mind when I sat down and said I needed to talk about some things today and I realized that a lot of it is still, you know, that I'm trying to learn on my journey to not worrying about tomorrow and being more spiritual and remembering that this is not my first time. I've been here before. This test has been put upon me. Did I fail? Is that why I'm doing it again? Or do I just need a refresher? You know, like CE classes, you got to go renew your real estate license. So you got to have classes every two years. <laughs> I mean, like, is this that? Or is this something else? I need that answer. I'm just, I'm going to just pray for that. Ask, ask for my answer. But yeah, here I go again. A lot of that single mama saga, saga stuff is happening right now. But I can no longer say, you know, we don't have help. I've seen help. I've gotten help. I didn't have to ask for the help. So I think I'm getting it this time. I think I'm going to pass. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to pass. Who pray on that for me? Um, but let me tell y'all. When I got out of my little um, I'm sick thing, I had to catch up on a lot of TV. Let me tell you. Did I tell y'all I started watching Yellowstone? I think I told y'all that before. But look, the thing is like that, okay? I may have missed the last episode. I don't like when they call it a cliffhanger or a season, what they call it? The mid-season finale. I don't like when they say that because it's going to be a, a lot of good stuff happening. And then I got to wait too long for the new answers to come. So I didn't watch that yet. I'm going to wait till the new stuff about to come out. <laughs> then I'm going to watch it. I've been watching um all the Law & Order's. It's just a loyalty thing at this point. I stopped watching them for years and years and years. But the new one just came back. Not the new one. The original one. The Law and Order came back as a new Law and Order series with new detectives and stuff, right? And then SVU. I left for a long time and I came back. And then 
A man that why she leave, I realize there's some contract disputes in real life. Go ahead, get your coin, girl. Get your coin. That's fine. But um Yeah, Olivia's still Olivia and stuff. And um Finn, they don't really have nothing for Finn to do, it seemed like. Finn need a storyline. Except following Olivia around, trying to keep her from, you know, doing stupid stuff. Or I don't know. He's I don't understand that. He needs a new role. Um, Chicago PD, still Chicago PD. Yeah, um, I gotta tell y'all, I was a little upset the way Halstead left. I thought it was a break. Um, then I read the articles and was like, oh, he left the show. Ain't nobody tell me he was leaving the show. What? what? <laughs> Wait a minute. They just married that dumb girl. That girl crazy as all get out. Who gonna take, who gonna put up work? Why y'all get her, give her a whole husband, just take him away? That ain't right. Then, um, my man Kev still being my man Kev. Um, LaRoyce Atkins with his nice, thick, brown skin, thick beard itself. Mm-hmm. We like him. We like him. Now, he used to be big Kev, right? And then he got to be little Kev, and I ain't really like him like that no more. I don't know if he got sick or he was trying a new diet, but... He thinned out, and mm, it just didn't hit me the same. But now he's like a nice, healthy medium between the two. And, yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah, Kev. I like, I like Kev a lot. Okay. Um, Hank ain't being Hank. I don't know what's going on with that. It's like he not even really in the show no more. They focusing on this, all this other crap. Hank can't be Hank. I don't like that. I think the show on its way out for real, tell you the truth. Um, but we'll see. Uh um, in other news, my design shows, Egypt and Mike love the dynamic of the husband wife team in the real estate game. I like how they do. I don't I have seen some shows and some husbands and wives where the husbands look a little less than stellar, but Mike holds his own and Egypt holds him up and he does the same for her and I love it keep them on tv as a matter of fact i was just thinking hgtv was probably gonna be um x'd off my list in the near future because there ain't enough black faces on there i need to go find where the black people on design shows on tv it might be some obscure little ch- cable channel or something maybe they gonna own i don't know i'm trying to find them because like the little kids i need to see myself on tv so i can know that i could be on tv i got some stuff to offer I got some design plans for you, but I need an opportunity to put it out there, and I don't know if I'm going to do that if all I got is Egypt from Mike on TV. Anybody else? They used to have a lot of black people on the fixer, not the fixer, up on the flip or flop shows. Haven't seen any one of them. They all gone. I don't know. I I don't appreciate it. I'm going to... I'm going to just pause right there because they do have Married to Real Estate and I'm going to really keep enjoying that. Matter of fact, it's Thursday. I can watch it early on Discovery Plus. I ain't got to wait till the night. So I'm, I'm going to stick with it for now. Um, I've been watching Fixer. Is it Fixer Upper? No. It's Fixer something else. Fix the Fixer the Fab. Something like that. Dave and Jenny Mars. You know what I'm talking about. They still all right. Uh, usually they more hits than misses, but every now and then Jenny be like, missing, and I'm like, nope, Jenny, that ain't it. Mm-mm. But yeah, Egypt and Mike all day. They got it. They know what to do. They got the whole game on lock, okay? The design, the real estate values, the, you know, what to put in the homes to get the value back up when they fixing them up. They do it right. They should have won Rock the Block as they did, yes. If they didn't, it was going to be a whole thing with me. But yeah, they won. Sorry, spoiler alert. Um, That was a long time ago. You should have seen it by now. Anything else I want to talk about? On, something else on TV I need to talk about. Something that happened. Let me see. I'm going to do it by night. East New York. Do y'all watch East New York? That is a good new show about this black... Um, police inspector lady who's kind of recently promoted and they put her in this 
um, district where the people not necessarily warmed up to her at first, but you got to watch it. There's some good stuff going on in East New York. It come on right after the Equalizer on Sunday nights with Queen Latifah. Equal, Equalizer didn't come on this week. Unless I missed it, I got to go find that. But yeah, I'm loving that show too. The Equalizer is bomb. They on season three. They got to keep going. Um, It seemed like they trying to ship her with that Detective Dante. I don't know if I want that though. <laughs> we going to see about that. Um. Yeah, no, I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence about that one. I don't think it's going to work. He like her. But uh, mm, I, don't, I don't see that being a healthy relationship for either one of them. Based on her lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Whew, but yeah. Okay, so let me do this by day. So it's my Sunday shows, The Equalizer, East New York. I haven't watched NCIS LA. However... So, here's my reasoning on that. I watched all of season 10, right? And I was waiting for season 11 to come on somewhere where I could watch it for free, but they want me to pay for it, so I haven't seen it yet. So, now they up to, like, season 13, and I'm still waiting for season 11 to come on for free. But the deal is, with all these packages that you can watch it, they're in syndication in so many places, they can't just give it away because... You know, it, it's some licensing deals and this and that and all that. So I just got to figure out which one of these streaming services will have it on when I can watch it. Season 11 for free. So then I can catch up. But right now they're in season 13. And what happened was I was watching NCIS, the original NCIS, and I caught up on all that. And then they had a three-part crossover with Hawaii and L.A., right? So, you know, I had to watch all the three episodes, so I had to watch all three of the shows, and it was good. I like Hawaii, but I ain't going to watch it every week. I like L.A. I ain't going to watch it every week no more till they give me season 11 for free. I got issues, but it's, it's what it is. Um, You got to be loyal to me like I can be loyal to you. I'm tired. You know, that's the main thing in my life right now. I'm not dealing with one side of relationships no more. So even when it comes to TV and companies I deal with and businesses as I support and everything, if they're not really doing nothing for me, I can't be bothered. So, yeah, I'm with that all the way around in my life. No one side of relationships. I'm not doing it no more. I got to get something out of this. Or I just can't keep supporting you. What's in it for me? That's where I'm at. Because, you know, again, my motto is, nah. Yep. Um. Okay, so that's my Sunday shows. I went into Monday without saying that was my Monday shows, but NCIS is Mondays. Um. Then on, I don't have a Tuesday show. Except on HGTV, that's usually my um, Good Bones night, but they on hiatus. Uh, they just finished their season recently. So then you got my Wednesday shows, my Chicago PD. I don't watch Fire and Med faithfully, but I do watch them on occasion. So that's Wednesday. And the Mad Singer be on when it come back in February, probably, on Wednesday. So I'm going to watch that. Oh, I got a new show on Monday that I didn't know I was going to... Let me tell y'all, this show, um, The Missing Persons Unit with Scott Kahn from Hawaii Five-0. It's on Fox. But check it out. Um, they had me in episode one. I thought it was going to be dumb. But they had me because of the big mystery in the show. And I'm still waiting for some answers on this big mystery. Like, ooh, hey, we. So they on episode three. And I'm like, ooh, we got to find out about this secret right here. Come on, let's get it. So I got to keep watching that. That's on Mondays on Fox. Um, okay, Tuesday, I say I ain't got a show on, on cable. I, I mean, on TV, I got it on cable, my little design shows. Then Wednesday, my Chicago night and my mass Singer night when it come back. Thursday, all Law & Order. All three, one, two, three, boom, in a row. That um organized crime is like that. But let me tell you, the first two seasons was vicious. This one a little watered down, a little weird. I ain't feeling it. But them first two had me. Every episode was like, ooh. It was some good shockers to me. Give it a chance. Watch that. Fridays, SWAT, Fire Country. New show. 
I'm liking this new show. That's, that's what's up. So, yeah, um, Fire Country, about this dude who went to jail, ended up in fire camp. I'm going to say fire camp. It ain't called that. <laughs> but basically, he get to be a firefighter while he in jail. <laughs> and they got a camp up there next to the uh, real firefighter people who's his parents. They the, uh, like the chief and the executive chief or whatever they do out there. But anyway, his parents run the real fire company. And um, he worked for the jail company out there. And he, he didn't want to be there at all. I can imagine why. Come to find out his sister died in a car crash. And he was driving. And he got all this damaged baggage and stuff. But he's a good dude. And then he didn't came home and all this other crap done kicked off since he'd been there. But it's a good show. You got to watch it. Yeah. It's some, some good stuff. I do have a Tuesday show. I'm tripping. I got to back up a little bit. The Rookie, I used to watch The Rookie on Sundays. They moved it, they ain't tell me. I think it's on Tuesday now. But The Rookie and The Rookie Feds, let me tell you, these are some goofy shows. They not real police dramas like, you know, grungy or gritty. They are lighthearted. And I love that about them because I want my entertainment to entertain me without bringing my emotions into it so much. So they make me laugh a lot. And, um... I like Nathan Finian ever since Serenity, Firefly, whatever show he was on. It was a show and a movie. One was Serenity, one was Firefly. I forget the name of the show and the movie, but that was them. And then um, he was Castle. So you know who I'm talking about, Nathan Finian. But anyway, yeah, and Niecy Nash on the Feds version. They two old people who done went, I'm sorry, their season. They were in their 40s. <laughs> He was a rookie with the police force. She's a rookie with the FBI. So they kind of funny. And I like that they give me relief from the heavy drama that's on TV. But East New York is like that. Some heavy drama. Get it. Let's get it with them on Sunday nights. So yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what I say? SWAT, Fire Country, and Gotta Watch Blue Bloods because that's my show. The Reagans are so self-righteous and... Typical white family, little upper crusty, even though they're supposed to be blue collar. They just, you know, like them families that we always see on TV. And people always want to look up to them and everything. And they always doing stuff and then taking liberties and then say, I'm sorry, and everything's all forgiven like that. But I still got to watch them because they be having some nice storylines in there. So, yeah, I'm mad, but I got to watch them. I don't like the, the whole narrative, but I got to watch it. I can't stop. And, um, ain't no watching TV on Saturdays. Just, I mean, if something on, it's on, but it's usually kids in here watching stuff on Saturdays, and I don't have time for that no way. But, yeah, I got, I, I got into some TV while I was laying in the bed, and that's what I did. So, for all of December and part of January, your girl was laid up, eating soup, drinking tea. And um, taking naps and watching TV. So that's what I did. I caught up on all those shows. And now I have some, you know, a pattern. And I'm about to watch some of that right now. I'm about to watch Married to Real Estate and something else before I go pick up a boy from the bus stop at 3 something. So I got to bring this to a close. But I just wanted to check back in and let you know that I'm still here. And I want you to still care about me. And we're going to be back in the kitchen cooking stuff. As a matter of fact, I ordered some things from Amazon Fresh yesterday. They came, and I have a couple of meals. Like, I made the my penny pasta with the turkey yesterday, but I got inspired, and I felt like I made some, um, you know, that turkey sausage, just like the Eckridge beef sausage in a little almost loop. So I sliced up a bunch of that and put it in my tomato sauce with the ground turkey. And I don't know why, I just felt like it, and it was good, and I'm going to have some for lunch today. And after I, you know, got my sauce all right and put it in the penne pasta with the butter and everything, and then I put some cheese on top of that because my grand boy was watching me the whole time, and he was like, well, you going to put cheese? I'm like, yeah, I got to put cheese. So, yeah, I put some Mexican cheese on top of that, and, yeah, he was into it, and he ate most of his food. He left a lot of chunks of meat on the plate, but he ate all the pasta and all the cheese and all the sauce, so I'm good with that. So, yeah, I got that. And then I have some, oh, shoot, 
I use the noodles. What am I going to make my Alfredo with? I might have some spaghetti noodles down there, but that ain't really my first choice. I like the penne noodle. But the shrimp frozen, so I might wait on that till another week. But I got some salmon down there. I can either make salmon bites for breakfast or some nice pan seared salmon for lunch or dinner. It's Thursday. That'd probably be a dinner. And then, you know, I'm going to be complaining again because I spent all these hundreds of dollars of money for week, this week on groceries. And um, I only got a couple of meals out of it for like three people. What, where does all the money go? Why is all the stuff shrinking? I don't like it. The, the piece of salmon I bought used to be twice that size. I got to go back to Sam's Club and buy another one because that one I got at Fresh was way too small for the money that I spent for it. And I'm tired. Chicken wing packs, can't get them from Fresh no more because they went from 14 in a pack for like $14 to 12 in a pack for $14 to 10 in a pack for $12. I ain't got time. I don't need that. I went to Sam's the other day. I bought 20 chicken wings for $15. Yeah. But I don't want to run to Sam's every week. It's 20 minutes up the street. You know how much gas costs? I don't feel like it. I like it when it comes to my door, but I don't really, you know, I haven't done the math because I was sick. But I'm going to start doing the math and think, you know, like, does it make more sense for me to drive 20 minutes up the street and come back? Or should I just order it and get a short in my order because it comes to my door? You just got to count the pennies and um, see what's better for your life. But, yeah, I'm back. I'm feeling energetic. I'm going to be cooking. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got some taco meat down there, too. We can have tacos today or tomorrow. So, yeah. Um, just checking in. Something you want to talk about? Shoot me a message. You know where I'm at. Go over there on YouTube. I'm at Tiny D. Floyd. Um, send me an email. TDF. No, that ain't the one. TD Floyd at MakeSignatureMoves.com. Yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for joining me today. I was not really informative, but, you know, I'm here and I'm always in support of my single mamas out there living their own sagas. So, yeah, we're going to stay up, but we're not going to keep being strong. We're going to look for somebody who's going to help us. We're going to look for somebody who's going to support us. Who gonna encourage us? Who gonna pull us along when we can't do it? Like every now and then I used to post on Facebook some mornings I'd be like, Oh god, I need a push. <laughs> we gonna look for people who gonna do that for us because we not gonna keep being strong. We not gonna keep living the results of that trauma. We didn't ask for none of that. We didn't ask that dude to walk away. We ain't asked him to start a new family. We ain't asked our fathers to be whatever the fathers were to us. We ain't asking none of that. We not gonna keep manifesting these behaviors as a result of the traumas that people inflicted upon us. We not accepting that, and we not doing no more one-sided relationships. What's in it for me? You gotta ask. Ask yourself and ask them. If you don't see it, let that go. And I mean that. Be easy. Be up. Take care of yourself. Stay positive. Toodles.